The Jets were set up for big things in 2023. They brought in Aaron Rodgers and everybody Aaron Rodgers had ever played with. We all know how great their defense can be, yet immediately Aaron Rodgers torn Achilles out for the year, or is he? He might be set to come back somehow in 2023 as a 40-year-old or close to it after a torn ACL in week one. I don't know. It's absolutely insane, but it could happen, and we're going to rebuild them today. Well, offensively, there's definitely some talent here. Some guys we can build around like Joe Tippman, Elijah Vera Tucker. Makai Becton is definitely a weird one because he has the traits of somebody I would really like to have. Only 24 years old, superstar dev tackle. That's a 77 overall, but he just has not been able to stay healthy and good for the Jets in real life which has been a big problem, and their protection has overall not been very good, and that, for any team, would be a huge issue, and the Jets are no exception. Dwayne Brown's about 40 years old in his own right, 38, and he's not going to be around forever, or even just this season. Why is his beard, like, off of his face? Bizarre. He looks like a Hunger Games character. Garrett Wilson's a stud, as is Brees Hall, but need more playmakers on offense. Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, not going to cut it. Certainly not Dalvin Cook in 2023. So receiver's going to be a big need. And then defensively, a lot of great players. CJ Mosley is back to playing at a top level in the NFL. Quincy Williams is really, really good as well. I love their defensive line. Will McDonald might rotate in more. Carl Lawson, I don't know what we do with him here. He's 28 years old, I want to say. Star dev, but I don't think there's much here for me in Madden. This is probably somebody I'm going to have to trade as soon as possible. I love Bryce Huff as a designated pass rusher DPR. John Franklin Myers, I think, is a good player. Quinton Williams is one of the best interior defensive linemen in the league. They have defensive linemen for days. Corners grade two. Sauce Gardner's a beast. DJ Reed's a really nice player. Bryce Hall, Michael Carter. I mean, so many talented players. And I might potentially move somebody back to safety. Maybe it's DJ Reed. Maybe it's not. For right now, though, I just want to make a couple of trades and uh, create opportunities for better players to get on the field and get some picks back. Got to put some talent around Aaron Rodgers. And we also might have to plan for, uh, you know, what if Aaron Rodgers regresses, retires, who plays quarterback for the Jets? It's probably not Zach Wilson. I can't seem to hit stick, force a fumble with CJ Mosley. Never mind. Okay. Just forget what I was saying. Doing pretty well in chase and tackle right now. CJ Mosley definitely going to be trending towards a skill point upgrade. Unless something terrible happens. All right. That is going to be a tough score to break in chase and tackle. A little over 1.4 million. CJ Mosley's just different, I guess. Dev trade upgrades, obviously, just doesn't really happen. And I wonder if my playing without dev trait regression on does anything. I wonder if that's a reason why we never see any upgrades. It's not never, but it is. It's like every few rebuilds, I might get one in training camp. CJ Mosley's somebody that is going to regress. He's 31 years old, 88 overall now, or will be, or somewhere close after an upgrade. I'm wondering if I should just trade him. Like, I know it's tough to just hit the reset button, but, you know, when we're really good in three years, is Aaron Rodgers going to be here? Probably not, unfortunately. Is CJ Mosley going to be here? Probably not, unfortunately. And it's because it's not that they don't want to be here. It's that they're going to be below an 80 overall. And that's, you know, a top-end player in the draft. So it's really tough to build around these 40-year-old players and 30-year-old players in the case of Aaron Rodgers and C.J. Mosley. So as much as I want to rebuild the Jets with Aaron Rodgers, and I've done that, it's on the channel already, you know, uh, months and months and months ago, the reality is that we can't rebuild around a 38-year-old player or a 40-year-old player. It is, uh, it's impossible to do that they could retire at any moment and they will get worse it's a fact plus three power moves for jermaine johnson i usually tend to uh, prefer finesse moves but in the actual depth chart area with the like the designated pass rushers 
you know, in the, uh, the sub packages, like rush left end, rush right end, the power rushers are actually favored in terms of overall. So I'm thinking that power rushers might just be better for team success and simulation. It's a theory I have. We'll see if that reigns true today, depending on our team success, right? But a lot of these guys will have to get traded. I like, I always hate doing that, but it is, you know, we have the realistic rebuilds and then these fantasy style rebuilds for a reason. The realistic rebuilds with the real draft class, they're on the way as we get closer to draft season. But in these, I kind of just say, hey, sorry about the team relationships with the players. We're trying to be as good as we possibly can be. And that often means out with the old and in with the new. Thomas Morstead, Greg the Leg are going to be free agents. Chuck Clark, Jordan Whitehead, Bryce Huff, Dalvin Cook. Bryce Huff, I, I really like him as a player. He's one of the actual best pass rushers in the league. So it's insane that he only has 83 finesse moves. He is a legitimate, amazing pass rusher. He is not a three down player. That much is known, but he is truly an amazing pass rusher. So like... I get that Madden doesn't want, okay, here's a DPR. We can't make him one of the best, you know, pass rushers in the game because uh, then our game would be exposed. It wouldn't make any sense. Bryce Huff isn't one of the best players in the league. It's like, but you're not representing him accurately. You have the 62 block shedding. All right, that may be fair, but they don't have it where the gameplay really matches those attributes and they don't make him or players with that mold they don't make that player one-dimensional. They probably defend the run just about as well as a guy with 20 more block shed, and they probably get equal pass rush of somebody with 65 finesse moves versus 90, if that makes sense, which it, it doesn't make sense. It shouldn't, but that's just kind of the way it works in the game, which obviously uh, is frustrating, but I don't know where we go from this. This is kind of the reality in which we live at the moment. EA needs to do a way better job of making attributes actually matter. And they haven't done that. And of course, Bryce Huff had a strong camp and will apparently continue to build on that uh, throughout this preseason. Getting his block shedding up honestly doesn't do much. It's already so incredibly low. I don't know what we do with him. I really have no idea. I'm gonna do block shedding we get plus five, so it's like, it's reasonable that he might be okay at defending the run at some point in his career. I haven't really decided if we're going to bring him back or not. I kind of think it's going to be very expensive to do so in the neighborhood of seven or eight mil per year. And that probably wouldn't be worth it to me with the depth we already have on the defensive line. But if we can make him a solid three down starter, he's going to end up being worth it. Again, I haven't decided, and I don't really think I'm going to be trading anyone before the season starts. I think it's going to be a wait-and-see type of deal and trade some of these guys at the mid-season mark, at the trade deadline, as they want us to cut Carl Lawson. That's how bad things are. All right, here's what we could do, and maybe that's how good things are in terms of depth. And Carl Lawson, unfortunately, for the Jets, has been a big disappointment. He was so sick with the Bengals, but... He got injured as soon as he came to the Jets. Really unfortunate. Injuries suck, obviously. I'm not saying anything crazy there. But uh, he is a player that we could definitely consider trading here. One year left on his deal. We're not going to cut him. We're going to try to get something back for him. Uh, and obviously, the offers are not exactly spectacular. I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut guys that are not named Carl Lawson. And then again, make some decisions at the trade deadline. I can't cut Carl Lawson just doesn't really make sense for me to do that in my opinion and I actually really liked Kenny Uboa at Ole Miss he was a really nice player hasn't done a whole lot in the NFL so far which isn't surprising you know a lot of these guys that are college standouts Bradley and I is kind of another one it's just really tough to be a really good NFL player you know like the NFL is so tough and when you, you hear these ridiculous arguments, and I don't know who was actually being serious with them, that like, oh, oh, could the best college team of all time beat the worst NFL team? And it's like, no, they couldn't. They couldn't. Because you might have a great team. Like, let's say the Georgia Bulldogs from a couple of years ago. They have like six players or something close to that drafted in the first round. They have a bunch of players drafted and a bunch more on that roster that are going to be drafted in the future. The worst college team in the league is a 
or the worst NFL team in the league is a college all-star team. It has only players that get drafted, including multiple first-round picks as well. All of those awful NFL teams would destroy a college team because they would just totally take advantage of the depth of that team. Like, yes, the college team could have some better top-end players than the NFL team, but it's extra years of development in the NFL. It's bigger, stronger guys, you know, more likely than not. It's just, it's too tough of a task for any college team, if we're just going to be honest about it. Every NFL team is a college all-star team and then some. If Bryce Huff can have a big game and end up getting, I guess he'd go up to superstar development, then we would have to keep him around, right? I don't know how I intend on setting this depth chart. Obviously, it's not going to be with Greg Zerline at quarterback. But for the rush ends, I guess Bryce Huff starts at rush right end, at least for this game. Jermaine Johnson on the other side, I like. John Franklin Myers, I'm going to move to defensive tackle. And he's going to rush with Quinnen Williams. I think that makes a ton of sense. But I'm just going to start him there over Quinton Jefferson. Slot receiver is going to be Xavier Gibson, because I might actually be able to develop him. And then eventually C.J. Mosley gets traded. I don't know what we do with Ashton Davis. It's an interesting team. This, I would say, as far as the teams I've rebuilt this year, and you can see in the entire rebuild playlist, I would say we have the most tough decisions of any team because there are so many players. Like, do I choose this guy? Do I choose that guy? Do I trade this player? Do I trade that player? Do we keep this player? Or do we move to a different guy? Do we draft another guy over this guy? Because this guy's good, but he might not be good forever. A lot of uh, vague <laughs> sentences there, but I don't know. There are a lot of players that, okay, we could make it work, but they might not work. Xavier Gibson's one of those guys. Is there something to develop here? think that there could be, but we'll see. Oh, we got uh, Jay Leno's kid in the draft class. Also, uh, I don't know, maybe brother of Yankee legend Juan Soto. Juan Soto the Yankees? Oh my goodness. Was I excited about that? Has no player notes. Is it just because it's early? It is because it's early. Well, Juan Soto is going to hit 80 home runs in Yankee Stadium this year. It's going to be electric. Also, Shohei Otani, 10 years, 700 million. Crazy day. Crazy day. I know it doesn't actually work out to exactly... That's not exactly what he's getting, not only after taxes, but it's a lot of deferred money as well. So it's not 70 million a year per se, but it is still a significant amount of money. And the strengths of this draft class, quarterback, corner, and left tackle. Well, we could potentially use those top two positions or, or two of the top three quarterback and left tackle very much in play and i just signed a scout with the last name matsui as the yankees are bringing in yoshinobu yamamoto to interview on monday and they're bringing in masahiro tanaka and yankee legend also hideki matsui wow what are what are the what are the odds of that the timing is bizarre and this is a lot of baseball talk on a football channel so let's go ahead and stop doing that well we won 16 to 7 did Bryce Huff get after it? Tell me he did it. Nope. Oh, man, they never do it, man. They never do it. I also feel like I never see tight end being a strength of any class. And even if it's just in a region, I'm interested to see what that tight end Trent Owens looks like. And we are 5-1 and one at the midseason mark, by the way. One of the best defenses in the league. Offense is doing enough. How do I essentially sell here at the deadline? Well, we're not going to sell all the way. We're going to trade some of those pieces that aren't making as big of an impact. But guys like Aaron Rodgers are not going anywhere. Guys like C.J. Mosley, not going anywhere. How can I trade C.J. Mosley when he's the leader of our defense right now? I can't. Can't do it. Now, that doesn't mean I won't look to draft a quarterback or C.J. Mosley's replacement at middle linebacker. But I can't trade Rodgers or C.J. Mosley. Absolutely cannot do it right now. However... Some other guys with expiring contracts that are buried on the depth chart when we might have decent backups in the case of Michael Clemens. Guys like Carl Lawson will be traded. Bryce Hall, maybe, will be traded. We'll see. First trade is Carl Lawson, Connor McGovern, and Quentin Jefferson as well as the sixth round pick uh, for a second and third from the Texans. So the sixth is just like, you know, the, the cherry on top to push this over. Texans making a playoff run. 
get now a couple of guys that could potentially start for them in Carl Lawson, Connor McGovern, and Quinton Jefferson. And for us, we're trading guys that either are not starters or we have really good backups behind them in the case of Joe Tittman, who can just really easily slide into that starting center role. And then defensively, Quinton Jefferson is behind John Franklin Myers now. Doesn't matter. Carl Lawson is behind Jermaine Johnson and Bryce Huff and Will McDonald. And we have Michael Clemens as a good backup. And then Bryce Hall, Chuck Clark, probably next to go. And like, it's not perfect, but Tony Adams at least is a serviceable starter. It certainly could be a lot worse. Now, why would I trade Bryce Hall? I just don't know that I'm going to re-sign him. He is 25 years old, star dev, but I don't think I need him on the team when it's pretty easy to draft corners in this game. And we have three solid ones that I prefer over Bryce Hall. I much prefer Michael Carter being a year younger, plus six overall, even with the worst dev trait. Michael Carter to me is way more valuable. So Michael Carter, the second, not the running back who's no longer on the Jets. He got cut, but Bryce Hall, the uh, corner, will be on the move, and he should have some type of value. Nobody wants him straight up, but I think I could probably get a pick for him. I'm trying to replenish my picks a little bit. And is there anything else I can trade? Nobody wants Dalvin Cook. I think it's just going to be Chuck Clark would be my bet. Jordan Whitehead also in the final year of his deal, but he's somebody I could see myself re-signing. Kind of the same deal with Ashton Davis. Not to long-term deals necessarily, but maybe two, three years at most. A lot going on here. Bryce Hall, Chuck Clark, Solomon Thomas headed to Seattle. We're getting a second round pick next year. So not this year, of course, 2025. We are trading a fourth this year, a fifth next year, and a sixth next year as well. So a lot of action there. But again, trading players, I'm not really interested in keeping around long term. Just makes the most sense to get rid of them. Now, Tyler Conklin could be traded next year. I think I'm going to hold on to him at least for this year. We are still making a run, and I don't really think we got worse in any way. It's just a slight downgrade at the starting strong safety position. But other than that, we are as good as we were, and maybe even potentially better for the future. More picks, didn't get any players, but because we're doing so well this year, I just, I can't trade my star players. I got to hold on. I'm trying to make a run. Now, Makai Becton, I'm going to bring back. In Madden, he's just too good to let go. 24 years old. We could realistically sign him for the duration of this rebuild. He's going to start. He's got a great development trait. Now, when healthy, he started his career off with a bang. He was excellent. But obviously, you know, he's not played up to that standard because he hasn't been able to stay healthy. Bryce Huff, I do want back. He's about as expensive as I expected about $8 million per year. He's 25 years old. You know, we could re-sign him to a big contract here, get him through age 28. It's a three-year contract because he's going to turn 26, then we have him for that season, 27, 28. And then we could potentially make a season or make another decision when it comes to that. But if we sign Bryce Huff here, we probably get him up to maybe an 85 overall, which is a pretty good starter. I'm going to hold on to Bryce Huff. Now, what does that mean for guys that we drafted in the first round? Like Will McDonald, not entirely sure yet. Jordan Whitehead, I guess I could overpay on a two-year extension. I don't really want to give him big money. Ashton Davis is going to leave. Is there anyone else I have interest in bringing back from this group? Not really. It's just be, it'd be picking up the fifth-year options on AVT and Zach Wilson. Uh, Vera Tucker is probably a no and then re-sign him and then Zach Wilson's definitely a no and then maybe trade him if anyone wants him at all the special teamers can go Dwayne Brown obviously is not going to stick around probably retires Al Woods maybe in that same deal there are a lot of quarterbacks down the board that seem like they could end up being quite good a 6'5 225 pound scrambler is interesting with accuracy yeah, it looks like these quarterbacks are worth taking or at least thinking about Clark McCoy Chris Lipton Justin Feldman, to me, seemed like the big three. And that's, you know, maybe Nick Soto and Anthony Hayward end up being the best in the class. But just from, you know, the, the bird's eye view, these three look the best. Great to elite throw power for Feldman, who's already accurate. A throw under pressure as well is always nice. Chris Lipton from Maryland. Great 
key ratings. Good to great throw power, decent to solid speed, although acceleration, agility, change of direction all look really good. He looks fantastic, I would say. And then Clark McCoy from Wake. Similar build. Maybe the best overall athleticism. And maybe the best overall combination of skills, to be honest, as well. This could be the class to take a quarterback somewhere uh, in the middle of the first round. 14-3 and three in Season 1 with a healthy Aaron Rodgers. Insane. Insane. This is about as well as a first season has ever gone in a rebuild, I want to say. And we haven't even made it to, like, the amazing teams yet. We haven't done the Chiefs or the Eagles. I don't know if I've done the Cowboys yet. I usually get to them pretty early, but I don't think I have. And they've been electric in real life. But also, of course, they are very, very good Madden simulation. But here we are with the Jets, 14-3 and three here in Season 1. We've lost the Giants and the Patriots, by the way, are two losses that I had noticed. And this is, I guess, what a healthy Aaron Rodgers would have got you in 2023. Didn't throw for the most yards or touchdowns, but didn't really make many mistakes. Brees Hall, he was the workhorse of the offense. 15 touchdowns for him, receiving Garrett Wilson at a nice year, as did Xavier Gibson. Gibson was fantastic. And he is definitely going to be at least wide receiver three next season, maybe after that, depending on who we end up getting. Defensively, a lot of tackles for Mosley and Williams. Tackles for loss, 17 from Jermaine Johnson, 15 from Quincy's brother, Quinnen, who also had nine and a half sacks, which led the team. Uh, eight for John Franklin Myers. The edge rushers didn't really do a whole lot. Sauce Gardner with five picks. Really good season for the defense. The offense was certainly good enough. And we have a first round bye here in the playoffs. So we're getting out of the quarterback conversation. And uh, we'll see how, you know, deep of a playoff run we can actually make. We have the Steelers in round one. Might as well upgrade the speedy Javelin Guidry. What a name. I think he's a Utah guy. I want to say he was, like, a track star. Does have 96 speed in the game. And I'm fully ready and prepared for the Steelers to upset us here in the playoffs. We lose 20 to 10. That's just what happens. If you sim playoff games... That's how it goes. It <laughs> You're just going to lose. That's why I jump in so often. And uh, the Steelers don't end up making the Super Bowl. Probably lost to the Chiefs, who end up getting smashed by the Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers. Patrick Mahomes does win MVP. Rasheed Rice and Jalen Carter get your Rookies of the Year. And because Rasheed Rice on the Chiefs, of course, wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, it's not going to go uh, to anyone from our team, unfortunately. I was hoping it would. But not this time. Maybe next year. I was really hoping Xavier Gibson would go up to star dev. That did not end up happening. Although, Brees Hall does go end up or end up going up to superstar development. Joe Tipman had star. And then defensively, Quinn and Williams up to superstar X Factor. And Quincy Williams up to star. Don't think I see anything else that's new. Sauce Gardner, did he have X-Factor before? I guess I thought that he did. Yeah, I think he did. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, AVT, I'm just not going to pick up the fifth-year option. I prefer to just extend him, and because he's so interested, I think we're going to be able to do that pretty easily. Jordan Whitehead, I do not want to give a big extension to. I'm going to offer the same contract. He says no still, which isn't entirely surprising. And then I think we're just going to let everybody else walk. We have a decent amount of money, $40 million which probably means somebody retired. Not necessarily, right? Patrick Peterson does. But uh, it, it's it's certainly possible. I think Dwayne Brown's going to be gone. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be here. He is, but he's down to an 80. This is what I'm talking about. We just, we can't. He's 40 years old. Now, am I going to trade him? I'm probably not. But I'm probably going to draft his replacement. Dwayne Brown was not on the team when I checked. So I'm gonna guess that he retired. We have 40 million in free agency. Josh Allen is here, but isn't a great fit for us. Tyron Smith is here, is a good fit for us, but is a little bit older. I prefer to go after players that we can develop a bit more. But we went 14 and three, right? 
signing Tyron Smith to a two-year deal does make sense to me. Does make sense. As long as we have Aaron Rodgers, we're going to need somebody to protect him. And if Tyron Smith can stay healthy, which isn't really a problem in these rebuilds, he's going to be a great ad. So I am going to offer Tyron Smith a contract. It's two year, I think two years does make sense. I'm actually going to up the money a little bit. And hopefully we can bring him in over Tennessee. And we take that top spot. And then, of course, we do need a punter. Do need a kicker. Tommy Townsend makes sense. Maybe Harrison Butker if he's here. Uh, or Will Lutz. Offering Devin White isn't the worst idea. I think a three-year contract makes a bit more sense to me than a four-year contract. He's 26. He's got superstar dev. I just wonder how you know, good we can actually make him. It seems like we're not really going to be in the conversation. I'm going to withdraw that offer and just pivot a bit. I just don't think we're going to be able to get him. Jordan Brooks could be good, though. Nobody's offering him either. Jordan Brooks could end up being a steal for us. Probably, again, do the two-year deal. Yeah, that would be a good a good get for us. Good grab to our defense. And I'm also going to offer Deshaun Elliott on a one-year deal as well. Hook him. All right, let's see who we end up getting. We'll see if our cap room goes up here. Well, it doesn't, which makes me think I signed all three. Tyron Smith, Jordan Brooks, and Deshaun Elliott all to the Jets. And now it's just a special teamer, so... That is a huge free agency for us. We also bring in Tommy Townsend. We just don't have any money. But I guess as long as we have Aaron Rodgers, we're trying to win right now. And this is probably going to be the last year that he's any good. So this is the year. All right, let's see the true talent on some of these quarterbacks. So we have a lot of these quarterbacks 95% scouted. But because I use my focus points on these quarterbacks already... We know that Chris Lipton is a round three to four true talent, which is certainly disappointing. Now, I thought I used it on another quarterback as well, but he's the only guy at 100%. Trent Owens, by the way, is up five in the class, is a top five talent. Oh, he's going to be a beast. We're just unlikely to be in position to get any of those players. Clark McCoy, we're going to take a look at, and also Justin Feldman. And those are my three focus players. This is going to be a really interesting draft because do we trade up for a quarterback? Do we trade up for a tight end? That seems a little bit wild. Where is the tight end expected to go? At number seven. That's going to be tough to get up there. 6'4", 252, 21 years old with great speed, elite agility, and a lot of A's. A for awareness, break tackle, carrying, catching traffic, catching, deep route running, medium route running, pass blocking. Short route running. Spectacular catch. He is as good of a tight end as you're likely to find in the draft. But we'd have to move up to seven to get him. And we are not anywhere close. We are at number 28. Oh, man. How are we going to figure this out? Where are the QBs expected to go? Clark McCoy at 23. Feldman at 20. Okay. Okay. Nick Soto all the way down at 12. We'll see his true talent in a minute. No quarterbacks expected to go until 12. Okay, this is... Again, I keep using the word interesting. It's going to be a very, very interesting draft. That is for sure. All right, let's see how this draft starts. At number seven is where I would consider a trade-up. Maybe even number six to jump the Dolphins. Of course, playing in that same division. But it would seem irresponsible to move up all the way for a tight end. It just would. However, if he's truly good enough, it might make sense. Nick Soto's around two to three talent. Seems like Justin Feldman is the best of the bunch. Now, Feldman had a draft story running about him that said coaches were unable to tap into his talent, which kind of scares me. They're like, but maybe NFL coaches will take the same chance. All right. He's got elite throw power, does not move well, but probably will have the best accuracy and the biggest arm. And I think we're kind of in a position where we need to take a QB. Moving up from 28 to 19 wouldn't be that difficult. From 28 to 7 or 6 is a different story. What can I actually trade? I have a second round pick at number 40. I have two thirds. I didn't really end up getting a lot of picks, did I? Ooh, man. 
We can't draft the tight end. Just can't do it. Can't do it. CJ Mosley down to an 85 overall. Again, I really don't think I'm going to be trading him. I think we're going to be starting Jordan Brooks. Could draft a linebacker for sure. Will McDonald would be tough to trade, but I don't know where he's going to start right now. He's Well, he's, I know he's not going to start. We have Jermaine Johnson and Bryce Huff, who I re-signed. Some of you probably would have preferred if I traded Bryce Huff, but he's better than Will McDonald. I'm not really sure if that was the right or the wrong call. I feel good about it, but we'll see. Obviously paid out big money. We don't really have anybody to trade either, except for Zach Wilson, but nobody's going to want Zach Wilson. All right, the irony of this is amazing to me. We're trading Zach Wilson a first, a third, a third next year, and a fifth in 2026 for a first-round pick from the Packers as Zach Wilson is headed to Green Bay. We have moved up to number 19. So that's the big trade for us is a move up to 19 where I fully expect to draft a quarterback. And that quarterback is going to be Maryland's Justin Feldman. Once again, Aaron Rodgers is having a quarterback drafted in the first round while he's still on the roster. And this time it is Justin Feldman from Maryland. You know what? He is just a pocket passer, but that's okay. He's got a big time arm and hopefully big time accuracy. Welcome to Green Bay. He's got normal dev, which is what I feared with that draft story about him, but he's got 94 throw power. 73 speed really isn't actually too bad. 80 acceleration. He's a pocket passer. He's not going to win rookie of the year, but hopefully at some point he can earn a dev trade upgrade and usually rookie of the year is a way to do it. So missed on the no dev trade there, but I think he is going to be the best quarterback of that bunch with that true talent. I think he's going to end up being probably somewhere near a 75 overall, maybe 73, 74, but definitely not the worst. And I could I could consider drafting a tackle here, although maybe not that one. Jamie Hayes, the free safety out of San Diego State. I guess they're a powerhouse this year. He's a run support archetype with C zone coverage. That seems really good to me. Jamie Hayes, probably near the top of my board right now. Tony Davis is a run stopper with B power moves. Elite strength. He's just a defensive tackle. I don't really know what we would do with him, but does look good. Randy Reddick. He definitely looks good. Really well-rounded. Looks to be quite a good player. I wish we knew more about him. It's it's taking too much of a chance on him, I think. Although, he again, does look quite good. Andrew Stanford from Louisville also looks quite good. He looks really good, actually. We have tough decisions to make. A run stopper with A zone coverage. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the right move is going to be. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, though. We're going to draft the safety, Jamie Hayes from San Diego State. Just really like the look of the player, only 21 years old, good athlete. And then I think we might trade up for a wide receiver. But Jamie Hayes, welcome to the team. Also normal development. It's going to be one of those rebuilds, I guess. 91 speed, 89 acceleration, 87 change of direction. I think he's going to end up being really good. Really athletic for a six foot three, 211 pound safety. However, certainly uh, could have used the dev trait. I'm waiting to see one of these receivers go off the board. And then I think is when we would make our move up. Because we, we probably don't need both. There goes Devon Mason. I think he was the deep threat that I was interested in. I don't know if I shouted him out, but he definitely looked really good. But can't get him now. He was one of the two that I would have drafted at that spot. It was either going to be Andrew Stanford or Devon Mason, depending on which one went first. So we should make a move up if we want the receiver now. I haven't done it yet. I know we would just have to give up like a ton to move up. There goes Andrew Stanford. It's just, we don't have the picks to navigate the draft the way I want to. There goes Randy Reddick, who I thought was the worst of the three, uh, but maybe not. Continue to go here. Oh no, it was actually Devontae Bush. Not the Texas receiver, Devon something. Not Devon House, old Packer. Devontae Bush was a deep threat. A deep route running, a spectacular catch, elite acceleration and agility, great speed. He was the one. Now, he is available. Is this the trade-up spot? There are some linebackers I like. I don't know that they're going to fall to our next pick. This guard seems like he could be quite good. Sammy Samuel? That, that cannot be your name. 
You can't be Sammy Samuel. He is A, medium route running. B, short. B, spectacular catch. A, awareness. 6'3", 265. What do I do in this draft? I don't like that name. Keelian? Ugh. Like, this looks like a really awesome hybrid safety linebacker with elite speed. What do I do in this draft? There's so much talent in the middle of this draft. I think the good move is to just trade future picks for picks right now. I'm going to get aggressive again. I'm going to get aggressive. It's a 2026 2 and a 2024 4, of course, this draft to move all the way up to number 30. There are a bunch of players I want. We will not be able to get all of them. I think I'm going to take the receiver. Receiver's a need for us. And if we can get a big time deep threat into this offense, I think we should. Route running. He's really just a deep guy, but welcome to the team. 93 speed, 98 acceleration, 94 agility, and you guessed it, normal development. I, as I told you, that's what this rebuild's going to be. It's the normal dev rebuild. I'm not allowed to draft anybody with a hidden development trait. Oh, the tight ends are flying off the board. <sighs> that really sucks. That really sucks, because I, I want Sammy Samuel, I think. I think that was the pass-protecting right guard I was talking about briefly. Okay, there goes Chris Wilkins. I think three tight ends just went right in front of us. So, if we want uh, the tight end Sammy Samuel, we're going to have to make a move. Trading a two next year and a six in 2026 to get it done. I know it seems like a lot to trade a second-round pick next year to move up in the third round, but it's got to be done. The players I'm interested in just look too good, and I don't want them getting drafted in front of me. Sammy Samuel, 6'3", 265, 21 years old. He's a great athlete, especially at that size. That's incredible. He looks to be a great prospect and will be the first hidden dev player of this draft class. Nope, normal dev. Unreal. <laughs> How is this possible? I'm done trading up. I'm done trading up in this draft. I've drafted way too many normal development players. I hate it. And it looks like all the good linebackers I was interested in uh, are off the board. Brian Brown, maybe? Are you the exception? Skip the combine. That definitely is interesting. Hey, he looks, he looks good for a day three pick. I'll say that. But I don't think I'd like to draft him here. All right, we're trading a three this year. A four in 2026 for a fourth this year from the Steelers, a third and a fifth next year. Trying to get some picks back, and I still would like to take that linebacker. So if he makes it to the end of the fourth round, that will be my pick. Brown from Notre Dame. But based on my luck already in this draft, I bet he's not even available. And if he is available, I bet he has normal development. He is gone. Of course he is. Yeah, of course. Had to be. Couldn't stick on the board. But I'll settle for his less athletic teammate, Anthony Simmons. A tackle, a pursuit. That's pretty good. Good depth, I guess. Yeah, I think that's about as poorly as a draft can go. I think so. Now, the players end up being pretty good. All of them, really. Feldman's a 74. Jamie Hayes is 72. Devontae Bush is a 75. Sammy Samuels is 73. These are guys that can compete to start right away and or be good backups. The draft was pretty stacked. Trent Owens ends up being a 78. Quincy Bullard, the corner, ends up being an 81, was the first pick. And the highest overall player in the, in the entire class was a left guard, Jay Elling from UCF. 97 strength, 95 impact block. That is a guaranteed superstar X factor, you, or superstar. You'd say this is a generational player, but offensive linemen really can't get superstar X factor, or maybe they can. All right, well, there you go. It's extremely rare to see that, but it's a superstar X factor offensive lineman out of the draft, Jay Elling. Generational left guard. That's their next Steve Hutchinson. What a pick by Seattle. Andrew Stanford ends up being a 76 overall, also had normal development. Was it possible, did, did anyone have hidden development in this draft outside of the freaking left guard? Devontae Bush was one of the highest rated players in the entire class and had normal. Seems like just about everybody in this draft had normal dev. Everyone has normal from what I'm seeing. 
Brian Brown was taken real early. Also had normal development. And is not much more athletic than the guy we drafted. Definitely better than the Notre Dame linebacker we drafted. But that is a really, really bizarre draft class. We were 4-1. and one. We've lost back-to-back -back games to go to 4-3 and three at the midseason mark. So not as much momentum as we had last year. However, I still think we're going to be in a good spot to make the playoffs. When you look at how we've performed, you know, down the stretch, I think we can play with anybody, right? Bills are 6-1. and one, Got to look out for them. Our offense is kind of the weak point of this team. Defensively, we're great. Offense is struggling a bit. Clearly, we're not going to make any trades. We're trying to go for it. Seven and three, we've retaken the lead in the AFC East. 69 mil in available cap room. Nice. And Elijah Vera Tucker going to need an extension. I'm very happy with the five-year deal. He very much wants to be here. It's a perfect fit. DJ Reed, I'd like back for at least three seasons. So that works for me as well. And DJ Reed is back as well. Tyler Conklin, on the other hand, I do not really want to extend to a long-term deal. I would do a one-year deal, up the money, and Tyler Conklin is back. Michael Carter needs to be back as well. We have good players that are going to be free agents. He wants to play in a warm-weather state. You can't. You got to stay in New Jersey, and he does. Deshaun Elliott, I'm not super interested in re-signing. He's not super expensive, though. So I'll offer him a one-year deal. And Deshaun Elliott is back. Hook him. I mean, I'm always interested in Deshaun Elliott coming back, but it wasn't, you know, a huge priority. Tony Adams is somebody I should probably not bring back. CJ Mosley maybe on a one-year deal. Lakin Tomlinson probably something similar. And then we're going to have some big contracts coming up. Three first-round picks. And funnily enough, this is the order they were drafted. Now, a couple of years later, the overall still slides down accordingly. Sauce Gardner was, I think, number four. Wilson was, I think, 10. And Jermaine Johnson, I want to say, was 24, 23, 24, something right around there. 26. Okay. So that's eh, close. But yeah, I don't know if I'd prefer to extend or just pick up the fifth year option. Maybe Sauce, fifth year option. But Wilson and Jermaine Johnson extend? We'll see. We should have the money to bring back Lakin Tomlinson. Oh, he's extremely cheap. So Tomlinson's back easily. And then TJ Mosley should also be a simple one-year deal. Gonna have to up the money on it to make sure he resigns. But he might end up being a franchise tag candidate. We don't have a ton of money right now. A lot of it is going to Aaron Rodgers. And... That's just, that's put that's putting us in a tough spot. It's not incredibly expensive, but especially for a quarterback, but it is still a, a decent chunk of change for an 82 overall 40-year-old quarterback. Justin Feldman going to have to really come on strong. Dev trait in spring, or not spring training, it was baseball again, and training camp would have been really nice. Didn't end up happening for us. Where can we save money? Mosley. Tomlinson, I just extended, but that contract's obviously super cheap in 2025. All right, I mean, it, it's still not really that bad of a spot, and we're paying Mosley so much anyway. Yeah, we can franchise tag him and, and feel okay about it. Tyron Smith contract is still pretty expensive, but he's still really good. CJ Uzama's contract is atrocious, but that's going off the books, so we're going to be okay. We're actually in a pretty good spot for cap room, to be honest. Not terrible at all. Well, we didn't exactly continue our momentum. Nine and eight, but did sneak into the playoffs, though, over the Dolphins, maybe. See if the Dolphins get in. Aaron Rodgers did have a pretty good season, though. Interception total did go up. I think one, and he threw nine from the year before, but better overall numbers. Brees Hall still putting up big-time numbers, although the attempts went down. Did score one more touchdown. Receiving Garrett Wilson goes over 1,000, as does the rookie from USF, Devontae Bush. All right. I mean, he could end up being quite good. The attributes are good. Just obviously getting the normal dev was a little bit disappointing for sure. But if he wins Rookie of the Year, which is possible, he's going to be up to star dev in no time. Xavier Gibson puts up good numbers, as does 
uh, Tyler Conklin as well. And then defensively, C.J. Mosley, big-time tackle numbers. John Franklin Myers, 24 for loss, 19 for Quinn Williams, 16 for Huff, who also had a team leading nine and a half sacks, eight and a half for Quinn Williams, six for John Franklin Myers. Not really getting much out of Jermaine Johnson up to this point, but the defense is still growing and growing and growing. So I'm really happy with how they're playing. And I think the offense started to find their footing a bit. We had the number 10 defense, number 14 offense, and I don't expect to beat the Chiefs here in the wild card. That's a really tough draw, a really tough matchup. I guess we could beat them. Seems like the underdog wins a lot in simulation. So we are definitely not favored in this game. And actually it was for good reason. We got crushed. 49 to 7. Absolutely smoked. We're headed to another offseason. 49ers beat the Bengals in the Super Bowl. I think we've seen this before too. Not me, but I think this was early 90s. This might have been a game. Patrick Mahomes wins MVP again. Devontae Bush does win Offensive Rookie of the Year. And soon, hopefully, somebody on our team does win MVP. Might be Feldman at quarterback. I can see that happening, but we will have Star Dev plus a skill point upgrade for Devontae Bush now. So that's nice for him. And I'm going to focus on short and medium route running. Usually the way I find that the best is by upgrading slot. Usually that uh, is your best chance of getting medium route running in my experience, but doesn't end up happening now, of course, because not a whole lot has gone right this rebuild. Our record has, at least in season one, but we haven't really turned it into much. Okay, we just jumped up with a ton of cap room as we get to the new league year. Do I want to pick up any of these fifth year options? I, th yeah, I talked about it. I think yes on both, just because they're going to be really expensive otherwise. They don't really want to be here right now, and it, this way we at least get them under contract for the next couple of seasons. Sauce Gardner doesn't like the no state income tax, or wants no state income tax, doesn't like that New Jersey does not have that. I feel them. That's why I'm in Texas. CJ Mosley's down to a 79 overall. Oh no. Yeah, that's brutal. Uh, I'd give you, a, I'd give you a one-year deal. And CJ Mosley wises up and resigns. Jamie and Sherwood is up to star dev. He's not an awful backup. He's gonna test free agency though. Yeah, good luck. Here in free agency, it's Nick Chubb, Amari Cooper. It would be a nice addition. Demarcus Lawrence, Trey Greenlaw. Trey Greenlaw would not be bad. He's gonna be extremely expensive because the game kind of thinks he's an edge rusher which sucks. They gotta figure out a way around that. Like maybe if their finesse and, and power move are not up to a certain standard, they're not treated like an off ball or they're not treated like an edge rusher. Greenlaw would be a really nice get. JOK would be a better fit for us, I think. He's getting a lot more interest though. Greg Newsom's here, although corner could be something I choose to draft. How do we go about this? We have money. We can sign somebody. I think I like Dre Greenlaw the best. I'd like maybe a two-year deal. I can pay him. We can stomach that contract for two years pretty easily. And the fact that nobody else wants him means that I feel pretty good about my chances. Well, we certainly cannot trade Aaron Rodgers or Tyron Smith as they both have retired. Tyler Conklin up to superstar dev though. But our new quarterback has to be Justin Feldman from Maryland. We're going to need a left tackle. Desperately. Could move Mekhi Becton over to that side. And then defensively, we have, I don't know, we have a problem at linebacker. Sean Elliott actually have to star dev. I like the corners. I like the D-line. I was hoping Hayes would get an upgraded star dev. We could draft another DB. We need linebackers still, I think. And I mean, we'll see what happens if we can bring in Drake Greenlaw, because that would obviously change things. But bringing in Drake Greenlaw to gang green, New York Jets, that could be a lot of fun. But that's why we have so much money. These guys retired on us. Now, I always sign Jedrick Wills, but it always makes the most sense to. He's always interested. He's the young... He's got a decent overall star dev. It always makes sense to go out and sign Dredrick Wills. I just, I can't bring myself not to because I don't want to be stupid. And it's just, 
it's smart to go after him every time. And we got both of them. Drake Greenlaw now wearing green and laying down the law. And Jedrick Wills will play left tackle for us. I am sorry for those. So the draft is actually very interesting. Now, Dexter Barnett, corner from Iowa State, I love. I mean, great speed at corner. A man, A press, A zone. He's going to be amazing. 6'3", 207. It's going to be tough to not draft him. And there are also some very, very good receivers. Now, I'm waiting for the one that I'm actually interested in to pop up here. Leo Ridley from Washington, 6'5", 221. Great speed, elite strength, and very, very, very good receiver. A catch and traffic release, short route running, ball carrier vision, break tackle, stiff arm, like weird. B catching, medium route running, spectacular catch, deep route running. So he's a tall and fast athletic route runner who also can catch the ball and work after the catch. He is amazing and obviously a top five talent in the entire class. We pick at 19 right now, okay? But I don't want to stick at 19. I am going to end up getting very aggressive in this draft if I can. And I'd love to figure out a way to get Dexter Barnett and Leo Ridley. Upgrade our secondary and our receiving core in the same draft. That would be excellent. Now, as you know, we are not exactly pick rich in this draft, uh, in this rebuild so far. And the last one didn't go especially well. But this draft class seems even better than the one last year. Haven't seen anything down the board. I haven't really looked. Usually I do that in the draft. And I mean, usually you can find steals at linebacker. Linebacker is a strength for us at this moment. Akeem Cruz looks like he could end up being pretty good. So those are your steals down the board. Yeah, they seem like they could be good. But I'm more focused on the top end talent in the draft this time around. I want the corner badly. And the receiver, I think, completes our receiving core. Says we need a quarterback. Couldn't disagree more. We have our QB. Now, why would QB be our number one team need when we have Justin Feldman with the QB of the future and the day one starter tag? Confusing, to say the least. Now, you could say, oh, that's your lack of depth, but that's not how this is done. So, a little bit bizarre to me. Xavier Gibson, a three and two sevens move me up. In this draft, we're moving up from that third round pick all the way up to the Cardinals second round pick at the top of the second round. But obviously, we are nowhere near done yet. But Gibson did have nice trade value. And obviously, we're not going to need him. We're not going to need Alan Lazard. But believe it or not, no one except for Aaron Rodgers actually wants him. Oh, maybe the Cardinals. <laughs> Why would they want Alan Lazard? They don't really. But we got to give him somebody. Who wants him? Okay, I am trading Alan Lazard, CJ Mosley, and Deshaun Elliott, as well as a first-round pick next year for a first-round pick next year from the Cardinals that I may use to trade up in this year's draft class. I don't know. The Cardinals had the most interest in the players I was looking to move. Now strong safety becomes our number one need. However, I very easily could move Jamie Hayes over to strong safety if I'm able to draft this corner who I'm trying to actively trade up for. So that was kind of the motivation there. We don't have a ton of picks in this rebuild. We, like, we have a decent amount, right? Nothing crazy. Definitely not a lot of late round draft picks, although that's not usually especially valuable. Still trying to move up in this draft. Don't have a ton to do it with. Who had number six? I thought it was the Jags. Maybe it's not. Well, we know it's not. Oh yeah, Patriots. Don't want to trade a defensive tackle. This is where I could trade Will McDonald though. And I just don't see the path to playing time. For Will McDonald. He's a year younger than Bryce Huff, so it's not like there's a ton of room for development there. Uh, it definitely makes sense to get rid of him. I'm going to move him to right end, and that's what the Patriots are looking for. Okay, the big trade's coming in. The only team that was really interested in Tyler Conklin was the Packers, so it made sense to move up to number seven using Tyler Conklin as well as a ton of other things. A first round pick this year, a second in 2027, a fourth this year, and a fourth in 2027. From the Packers, we were getting a first round pick next year, or excuse me, this year, number seven, obviously, and a second round pick next year. So we're trying to still fortify our future picks 
as well as moving up currently. And that corner should be available at number seven. That's what we're moving up for as Juan Babineau goes to the Patriots at six, leaving us at number seven to take the corner, Dexter Barnett from Iowa State. 6'3", 207, 21 years old, with great speed, agility, change of direction, and some incredible skills. He is a starter right away. Whether I want that to be at corner or safety, he's a starter right away. 94 speed, 93 change of direction, 90 acceleration, 91 agility. He's going to be a monster. Just have to decide where to play him. And I think I might lean corner with his press. We'll have to see his coverage ratings, obviously, and how good his tackling and things are. Uh, but that obviously makes a ton of sense to do. And then we don't pick until the top of the second round now. So we are going to have to move up. And I don't know how difficult that's going to be. Ideally, I don't trade my first round pick next year. Ideally, that doesn't happen. However... I think it probably will have to happen. Although, if I can use this pick from the Cardinals projected to be at the top of the draft, if I can use that to trade up in this year's draft for a mid to late first, I might be able to get a future pick of lesser value. So we'll see what we can do. I probably can't get another first round pick in whatever trade, but I certainly would like to move up. and. Where am I trying to move up to? Is it is it 14, maybe? It'd be 14. The player I want is expected to go uh, at 16. Leo Ridley from Washington. Bucks are interested in a middle linebacker. I don't really have that right now. And I'm thinking about drafting a linebacker. Is there anyone of this bunch that I would feel good about trading? I don't really want to trade any of them, is the, th is the thing. Now, we could trade an offensive lineman and draft one. Lakin Tomlinson, maybe? What do they think about Lakin Tomlinson? Not interested really at all, which, yeah, it makes sense. All right, this trade is happening. It is the Cardinals' first round pick next year. Our second round pick number 35 this year that we traded for, a fifth this year, and a fifth in 2027. We are getting number 14 from the Bucks, a second and a third round pick next year. So no first round pick next year, but that's because we are going for it this year and getting some incredible players we got the corner i wanted can we come back now and draft the receiver he is still available he's a top five talent in this class that should not be available up to this point elite athlete i would say with incredible attributes welcome to the jets hidden development 93 speed 95 jumping 90 acceleration with 86 agility and change of direction this is a big time receiver emphasis on big 65 221 and a great weapon for our second-year quarterback, Feldman, to throw to. No more Aaron Rodgers in New York. And now we're getting some weapons. And now this is my last pick of the entire draft, really. We're just going to try and draft the best player available, regardless of position. I think it probably will end up coming at linebacker. And Warren Waters looks really good. A play rec, A pursuit, elite speed. He probably ends up being the pick. I'm going to take another look around, though. This is a tough choice. Tough choice. There are some good outside linebackers. Rakeem Thomas from Penn State. It's always like, do you take the outside linebacker that looks a little bit better or the middle linebacker? And I I don't know. It's tough because middle linebackers are usually better. I'm going to go with the middle linebacker, Rakeem Cruz from Oklahoma State. Does have hidden dev, 85 speed, 88 acceleration. I hope that was the right pick. The outside linebackers always will have the higher attribute grades, but that's compared to the other outside linebackers. The middle linebackers are the true off-ball guys being compared against only off-ball linebackers, so their individual ratings mean more versus a pass rusher. Like, is B zone coverage at outside linebacker? Well, that's being compared to some pass rushers. Is that, is that going to be as important as a middle linebacker? with even C zone coverage? I don't know. I don't know. So we took the middle linebacker. We'll see if that pays off. And I think it did. Dexter Barnett is a 79 overall, probably the best player in the class, right up there if he's not. 94 speed, 80 man, 80 zone. 76 press was A press. It's like not that crazy. I actually think he starts at free safety. His injury is atrocious. 30 injury. Maybe that's why he drops a little bit. 
But we're happy to add him to our team. And right now he's a 79 man to man. I think I'm going to wait to move him to free safety before upgrading him. Although, no, maybe I, maybe I don't. I just want to know if he has that attribute slot when I do, uh, you know, an upgrade in training camp. But it doesn't really matter. He's going to start anyway. See if his overall changes. No, it sticks at 79. Leo Ridley is a 78 overall wide receiver, and it's nice to get these hidden devs again. Route running short is especially good. Great traits. Amazing jumping change of direction. Everything's really solid with him. Great release and jumping kind of stand out. And then Akeem Cruz ends up being a 74 overall. That's just really good. Tackling is amazing. Block shedding is good. Coverage is at least good in zone. Or okay, man coverage is not good. But overall looks really solid. And there were actually two 80 overall players. One was a receiver. Went before we traded up. Alexander Vincent. Who I guess agility and change of direction brings him over. Great ball carrier vision as well. So, Alexander Vincent, definitely really good. We looked at him. He looked okay. I, I wouldn't have guessed probably an 80 overall. Kendall Wall ends up being an 80 as well. Looked at him. I just knew his own coverage wasn't great. So, I just didn't really want to take him. And I honestly think that our corner playing safety is better than this safety playing safety. It's not like his tackling is anything crazy, right? Or hit power. Yeah, I, I don't know how he's an 80 overall hybrid, but our safety now is not. Doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. Because when you look at him, 79 overall hybrid, but better zone coverage. Is it just, I think it's got to be tackling is lower. But he's, I don't think he's especially worse. I would prefer this player, even though his injury is disastrous. But again, that won't matter. A bunch of really good guards as well. This was a really strong draft class. But we got, you know, two of the top five players. Feel pretty good about that. Warren Waters ends up being a 75 overall outside linebacker. Same thing with Rakeem Thomas. Both players I looked at. But here is the thing. If we go to 74 overall Akeem Cruz and put him at outside linebacker, I bet his overall jumps up. That would be my expectation. So you're trying to draft the best player you can, regardless of position. And you want to, you know, figure out how those guys feature in. And his overall does jump up to a 75. So uh, it doesn't really end up making a difference. They're all 75 overall, I guess. All the safeties I let go are just available in free agency. Like Chuck Clark, Ashton Davis, Tony Adams. I might just re-sign all of them. Just to have that depth. Also going to sign 35-year-old Bobby Wagner. Anything we can get to make our team as good as possible right now. Fletcher Cox at 34 years old. Why not? Ooh, star dev increase for the tight end. That's a good thing. So we trade a superstar dev tight end in Tyler Conklin. And now we have a star dev tight end who is younger by a lot. And I mean, working on towards being better. Probably going to develop a whole heck of a lot faster at 22 years old now with Star Dev. Okay, so this is the team. I like the offense. Obviously, we took a big downgrade at quarterback with the retirement of Aaron Rodgers. The defense, I think, overall looks very good. I'm going to start Jamie Hayes over Chuck Clark for sure. And then, of course, the corner we drafted has been moved back to safety. You guys knew that. Specialist-wise, I guess Michael Carter, the second sticks in the slot. I think our slot receiver is going to end up being the rookie. Although we could keep Bush there, but I think I'm going to move the rookie. And, I mean, the rest is kind of as it has been. Garrett Wilson went off. He got some XP. And now if Leo Ridley has a big-time game, he might be going up either in dev trait or XP or something with the tandem breakout challenge. Which means I'm going to move him up to wide receiver one for right now. For one game, just to see if he can exceed our expectations and... Get a huge chunk of XP. We're going to upgrade run support on Dexter Barnett. I'm guessing an ability slot's going to pop out. And it does. So he has at least superstar development. We need tackling to go up a bunch. And he's going to be close to a 90 overall in no time. And we lost. So that doesn't bode very well for the prospects of Leo Ridley. And he didn't do what he needed to do. As always. Well, and Leo Ridley is revealed to have superstar X-Factor development. So... Pretty good draft pick already. 
We don't know the depth rate of the corner playing safety. I'll just call him the safety. We might actually know it now. Now we don't yet. Midseason mark, we're four and two. Dolphins doing quite well. Our offense and defense are both about the same. Like pretty good, but not exceptional by any means. We have made it to the trade deadline. And the question becomes, how do we want to approach the trade deadline? Well, if we have any assets to move, they should be moved. But for players that can help us win now, John Franklin Myers has not been amazing for us. Signed AJ Dillon in free agency for essentially nothing. But we're in a spot where I think we are finally going to make that run. Aaron Rodgers couldn't win those playoff games for us, unfortunately. He doesn't do a very much to push the Aaron Rodgers playoff narratives. But what can we really upgrade here? Barnett also has Superstar X Factor, by the way. So some incredible draft picks so far. How do we get his X Factor activated? And on offense, too. It wasn't popping up earlier. Let's get those activated. Come on, what are we doing? All right, changing it to something else got it activated. So I think, and now it actually works for Leo Ridley as well. So we're actually in a great spot. Just need to continue to develop these guys and we're gonna be incredible. We can't really trade for much here, but we can re-sign the players we actually already have. That's gonna start with Brees Hall and he'll return. We have 67 million now. Jermaine Johnson I want back. Jordan Brooks I would want back as well. Johnson's going to be on a four-year extension. He resigns. Will McDonald, are you coming up? I think he might be in his final year. Or maybe he's got one more left. All right, looks like he probably... No, it's a fifth-year option. That's right. Um, We might pick that up. I don't know. It's not exactly like a big-time player for us. Lake and Tomlinson maybe for another year. Some of these we might just wait until the offseason. But... Oh, it's really just Jordan Brooks and John Frank, uh, Franklin Myers. Quincy Williams and kind of like iffy if like on whether he should stay with the team. Jordan Brooks actually takes one year less than I thought he would want. And then John Franklin Myers. I guess a two-year deal is fine. It's probably a little bit too much for him. But we're going to keep the band together and try to make a run here. So 2025, I feel good about our playoff chances. We're four and two. Just got to keep going. And we do make the playoffs facing the 11 and 6 Dolphins of the wild card. We also went 11 and 6 with some upgrades. Devontae Bush going to join the 80 club. Oh, very exclusive club. 80 overall plus. Wow. And he actually didn't even get there with the slot upgrade. 79 still. Looks like Justin Feldman was third in the NFL in passing yards, 10th in touchdowns. Really nice season. Only 13 interceptions. Rushing Brees Hall. Again, continues to play really well. Yards per carry up near 5, 12 touchdowns, averaging over 80 yards per game. Receiving, Garrett Wilson had a huge year, as did the rookie Leo Ridley. He might win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but certainly no dev trade upgrade at Superstar X Factor already. And Devontae Bush was incredible as well. Sammy Samuel, also with a great season. Our passing offense and running offense was incredible. Our offense in general just put up some huge numbers. Defense like, continues to get better in terms of actually pressuring the quarterback but we still haven't had like that big season. Jermaine Johnson with just one sack. Like our edge rushers are doing nothing. Nothing at all. Trent Owens, by the way, superstar X Factor, as if the Dolphins needed another offensive weapon to join Jalen Waddell, Tyree Hill, Raheem Mostert, Devon A. Chan. Now Mostert might not be there anymore for sure, but damn, that's a lot of weapons. And we are up seven nothing early. Now 10-0, keeping the Dolphins off the board until that finally ends. 17-7, though, we take it right back. Dolphins trying to find the end zone for the second time, unable to do so. Still 17-7. Now 17-10 after a field goal, but we score another touchdown. Looks like they might have had a stop at first, but then, for whatever reason, we got the football back and scored again. Field goal essentially ices this game, but, oh, why is that what happens? How did we get caught up on that block? How is that even possible? All right. A minute to play. We could just run the ball because we're not going to convert here on third and 15. Might as well just take as much time off the clock as we can. So we're going to run it all the way down and we might actually end up punting as opposed to trying a field goal here from the 36. They have no timeouts, right? I know it's a 53 yarder. I get that. Seems makeable, right? But I think the punt is just the smarter decision. We don't risk a block. And 
I think this pretty much lets us chew off almost the entire clock. By the time we punt, there's going to be 20 seconds when they touch the football. And it's actually going to end up being less than that. Number one thing, don't kick this out of the end zone. Here we go. Sky high kick. That works for me. 16 seconds, no timeouts. They need a touchdown. I know the field goal wins the game, but it's a 53-yarder. I don't know. I just think the punt. Like, you do let them touch the football again, uh, and they can potentially tie the game, but I don't think they're going to be able to. Last play of the game here for the Dolphins. They have not even managed to throw to a receiver, and there's Trey Greenlaw icing it. Tua goes down, game over, we're moving on to the divisional. Really big win over the Dolphins. We did just enough to get it done. Justin Feldman didn't exactly have a great game, but didn't need to. Defense kept up, ground game carried us clearly. Divisional round against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's pop in, let's get the W. Jags up on top early, seven nothing. Our offense needs to wake up and they end up tying it up here as we approach halftime and take the lead before the half, 14-7. Defense playing really well here against the Jags. 21-7, offense starting to find it. Although the Jags score again, 28-14, 28-21, and that is your final. Real back and forth game as Robert Sala has led the Jets to the first AFC championship for the Jets since what, 2009, 2010? Oh my goodness. And they did make back-to-back. -back. I can't remember if it was 08-09 or 09-10. Ooh, and it's going to be an old-school matchup. Jets-Ravens. Quinn and Williams going to go up to, I think, a 99 overall for this game. Yep, true 99 overall with the power rush upgrade to a 97, plus three power moves as well. Hopefully, we get more of a pass rush in this game. Got to shut down Lamar Jackson somehow. But when you play against a mobile quarterback, you got to stay disciplined in your rush lanes. Otherwise, they can step up and really make you pay. But I think we have what it takes. Both 88 overall could go either way. Ravens up early 7-0. Still a lot of time left in this game. Though we get a field goal, but it seems like we're going to have a tough time stopping the Ravens offense today. And our defense, uh, of course, needs to step up. Offense as well. Ravens with a slight lead, and they're going to extend that to 10 points here with four minutes to go. We're going to jump in on offense with Feldman. Need to find somebody quick. That's wide open. Quick throw. There's Bush. He takes us to midfield. Okay, what do we do here? We go play action, take a deep shot. Let's cancel that, though. I, I see it down the field. It's ah, We just didn't have the time. Third and 21, we are not bouncing back from getting sacked at all. But there is Bush down the sideline. He's scooped up by Kyle Hamilton, who saves a touchdown. I really needed that to be a score. We should be able to score here before the two-minute warning hits, though, if we could actually snap the ball. They have a QB spy there, but he's not fast enough. Feldman taking off and pushed out of bounds at the five. This is Grant DuBose on the field. And we're going to throw to him. Touchdown. Is that Charlotte's very own Grant DuBose? I want to say he was Charlotte. Is he the next beast out of Charlotte? I don't think so. But touchdown for the Jets. And we save that two-minute warning as well. All right, let's jump in here on defense. Try to shut down Lamar Jackson if we can. Obvious run situation here for the Jets, or for the Ravens. We got to shut it down. And Lamar Jackson goes straight up the middle, coughs up the football. Jermaine Johnson can't fall on it. We call a timeout just before the two-minute warning. We got Lamar to fumble, and we can't take advantage. That was our opportunity. Let's see if they run the ball again. They go play action, throw outside, and it's a huge catch. Did not expect them to pass there. Now a lot of time is going to tick off the clock. A lot of time. Third and five. Do you pass here if you're the Ravens? They can take the clock all the way down here. They do actually end up throwing, and it's a quick throw wide open. That'll pretty much be the game. It's an unfortunate end to this season. We gave it our best shot, but they just kept passing the ball in these obvious run spots, and we were not equipped to handle it, obviously. Ravens going to walk out of here with the win. Yeah, just, uh, we needed a three and out. That's what we needed. When we allowed the first down, we needed a stop then. Still couldn't get it. And the Ravens are going to the Super Bowl. We're going to bounce back one more season. 
This time, we're going to hope to win the Lombardi. Ravens beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson wins league MVP. Leo Ridley does win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Not that it's going to matter for a ton other than XP, so I guess he is going to get a nice boost. But we need to go in here, and we need to actually make the Super Bowl, and then win it would be preferred. $47 million. Not going to pick up the fifth year on Will McDonald. Quincy Williams is 30. Doesn't really want to be here. I will overpay him to keep him. He's going to test free agency. You want to split up from your brother? Come on, Quincy. And the rest are just like depth players. That doesn't really make sense to re-sign here when I can get him for cheap uh, after free agency has ended. So we have $47 million to spend. And I am going to be spending it. We're trying to win a Super Bowl this year. So we are going to go for it here. Not going to spend all of it, probably. But if there's a big-time player that can change our team, like maybe... You know, a big-time pass rusher. We're going to try that. And Feldman still does not get the boost up to star. Sammy Samuel is up to superstar dev. I mean, the offense looks great. We need a guard replacement for Lake and Tomlinson. And then defensively, Cruz has star dev. I mean, our team looks great. We could use an upgrade at safety. Potentially linebacker. Edge, maybe, to just get a real superstar type player in there if there is one. And then we need a guard. So any offensive lineman will do. Brock Purdy's a 95 overall with superstar dev. Do I sign Brock Purdy to make a run? I mean, it's an option. Joe Tooney's definitely... Well, we just can't afford Brock Purdy. He's 50 million per year. I mean, are you joking? No shot. Jalen Phillips off the edge could be good. Matabike at defensive tackle would make sense, but we don't really need that. Okay, so let's, let's get Joe Tooney. Big time guard upgrade. And do I pay Jalen Phillips? He's going to be expensive, but does he take us over the top? I think he might. We are going to offer him. It might be us or going back to UCLA or LA with the Rams. Of course, UCLA transferred Miami. I think safety we could bring back to Sean Elliott. Doesn't really make sense to do that. All right. We have the guys we're targeting. Joe Tooney, Jalen Phillips. Do we get any of them? So far, no. We're going to have to up our offers if we want any of them. And we made the best offer we can to Jalen Phillips. Their decision's up to them now. We didn't get Jalen Phillips. And we didn't get Joe Tooney either. Oh, this is a brutal free agency for us. Trying to go for it all, and we missed both players we went after. Joel Batonio is going to be a pivot for us. Which, you know, it's not, it's not so bad. And then Tyron Matthew for a year actually uh, interests me as well. And he just kind of feels like he's a player that could end up on the Jets at the end of his career, which I guess is coming up probably, right? So Matthew and Joel Batonio we're going after. We'll see if we can get either of those guys. And they're slight upgrades, but, you know, hopefully that's what pushes us over the top. Hopefully Feldman got up to star dev. It'd be kind of surprising if he didn't, but he didn't after his first year starting. That was pretty good. You figure you finished third in the league in passing yards, though. You'd probably be due for an upgrade. So we'll see if that ends up happening. Uh, but no, it didn't. And I may have seen that already. I think I did. But nope, just still normal development. And then defensively, we did get Tyron Matthew. Obviously not going to be playing free safety for us. And then offensively, we did get Joel Batonio. So... I don't really know what we need. You might argue quarterback. I don't really think so. I don't know what I'm going to draft. Maybe the best available linebacker, but we're not really going to find somebody that's going to start over the guys we have. So uh, we're just headed to the draft. Best player available at whatever or whichever pick we have. And we'll see what happens. No first round, but we do pick at the top of the second round. Number seven here in the second. And we also have a pick down the board at number 27, our pick in the second as well. So, best player available. It's not going to be a quarterback. Marcus Battle looks pretty good at safety, though. It's a maybe. We're going to take an elite speed defensive tackle. Brian Goodson, nice guy to work into the rotation. 88 strength, 81 speed, 84 acceleration. I'd be thrilled with that if this were at the start of the video. But unfortunately, at this point, he's not probably going to be able to rotate in. No, nobody is, really. So, it's a great pickup. A good third defensive tackle, I guess. But, ooh, Peter Vincent, on the other hand, might be able to uh, compete to start right away. Another Notre Dame linebacker, elite speed and acceleration, great attributes. And, of course, has, has hidden dev, 86 speed, 90 acceleration. Did I read Notre Dame? 
Where I see Notre Dame, he says Oregon State. Am I all right? This is interesting. Javier Whitfield slot type with A man coverage. All right. Why not? Hidden Dev, not the fastest guy, but great acceleration, agility, change of direction, and A man coverage. That'll be a fine option for us. And I think this is, yeah, the last pick of the draft for us. I think we've crushed it, to be honest, given, you know, where expectations might have been. And shoot, man. Where do we go from here? Could just take a receiver. Obvious slot type. Henry Chambers will be the one. B tackle, A zone coverage, great speed. Special teamer. And I think we did pretty well. 73 overall defensive tackle, 74 outside linebacker, 73 corner. Expectations were not especially high, and I think we did a really good job. And the class as a whole was not good at all. Only 276 overall players. The rest were 75 or below. This is like, this is a bust draft class if I've ever seen one. This is one of the worst draft classes I've probably ever seen. This is atrocious, and it makes what we did in the draft look that much better. All right, this is the team. I think it's in a great spot. I really do. Love the defense. Uh, Matthew's going to move over to strong safety, and that's really it. And, you know, part of the reason I feel so good about this team is I think we're crossing, uh, crossing over, like, new overall thresholds. Like, Feldman's going to be an 80. Ridley's going to get up into the 90s, I think. Uh, some of these new players are going to be 85 overall, plus, like, Jermaine Johnson, Bryce Huff. Tyron Matthew. I say new players. Not all of them are new, obviously. I just named a lot of guys who are not new. Uh, but it just the younger players are finally developing. Some of them are reaching their overall cap, I would say. But this is a perfect chance to make a run. Let's make a run. Four and three at the midseason mark. It's not bad. It's not terrible. But it's not great. The Bills I'm worried about. We're going to need to go on a bit of a run here to even make the playoffs. Now, we can still pretty much just win 9 or 10 games and make it in. But obviously, when you have to play good teams like the Bills and lose 10-7, your chances get worse and worse and worse. And now, if we lose to the Patriots and Steelers, our hopes of making the playoffs are essentially over. And we will see if we are a playoff team. Um, yeah, I think we put a great team together. If we don't make it, I guess I will go for another run, but... We do end up making the wild card round of the playoffs. It didn't load in at first. I got kind of scared, but we do go 11 and 6. So we do have a nice little turnaround there. Bills went 13 and 4. Not a team I want to run into in the playoffs. Justin Feldman ends up having a great year 4,100 yards, 39 touchdowns, and 9 picks. Brees Hall was still excellent, putting up the numbers that we're kind of used to seeing him put up. Garrett Wilson was great. So was Devontae Bush. But Leo Ridley didn't really play the impact that I expected him to. Might throw him in the slot for this playoff run. And on defense, similar numbers to what we've been seeing. Our edge rushers are just not making that big of an impact. Not like Tyron Matthews' impact. Five picks in his first year on the Jets. Just, it's a little bit disappointing with these pass rushers. I expected more of Jermaine Johnson. I thought, you know, John Franklin Myers would have more than just like one season. I thought Bryce Huff would be a little bit more consistent throughout. But we just didn't get the results I was expecting. So let's jump in here in the wild card, take on the 87 overall Las Vegas Raiders. This could be a one and done. This would be, this would be suck. We take the lead first, seven, nothing. If the Raiders want to tie it, they do. But we retake the lead 14, seven. And we keep the Raiders from scoring. Big DJ Reed interception, but it doesn't end up in points for us. As we finally retake the lead 17, 14. Raiders grab it right back. 21, 17. We're going to have to make a bit of a comeback here. A minute and 40 to play. It's third and seven. Oh, we got to have it. Although it is four down territory. Garrett Wilson streaking down the field. There he goes on the post. And Garrett Wilson burns Delpit for the quick score. I kind of wanted to take all the time off the clock. But when you see Garrett Wilson wide open down the field like that, you got to hit him. Defense going to need to make a play. All right, third and seven. Obvious four down territory here for the Jets. That's open. No, it's not because we're lurking underneath. Great play. Badly thrown ball. It was open. But Hayward missed the throw. And now it's fourth and seven. Game on the line. Got Bill Clinton in the slot. He's a killer out there. Or actually, no, he's a manslaughterer out there. Here's a deep throw down the field. DJ Reed forces it incomplete. It was sailing out of bounds anyway. This quarterback sucks. And we are going to win the game because of it. 
Yep, that's game. <laughs> for a second, I thought the Raiders had the ball for some reason, like an instant turnover, but no. 24-21 is your final. We're headed to the divisional. We get the Texans in the, the divisional round of the playoffs. Leo Ridley going to be up to an 89 overall. And this Texans team, we're seeing them a lot more in these rebuilds now when we rebuild AFC teams here deep in the playoffs because CJ Stroud's so good, Derek Stingley, Will Anderson Jr. They've got a great core to build around. And when they bring in players like Devin White and other you know, guys to improve the team, we consistently see them in the divisional, in the championship round. You know, the uh, the Texans are a team to watch out for, obviously. We, we all know that up to this point. Still have to improve. Their roster's not great, but CJ Stroud is playing so well that it really doesn't seem to matter right now. Although, here in video game land, the opposite is true. They have not scored a point up until when I say that. 28-14 into the fourth quarter. Texans trying to make a comeback, but it was shut down, and this game is over. 28-14. That hat from Robert Sala looks so crazy. It looks like he's in a Christmas story or something. It looks like a nightcap or something. Looks, uh bizarre the Ebenezer Scrooge of the Jets and the conference championship has the 13 and 4 Buffalo Bills the one team I said I didn't want to play they're only at 86 overall compared to our 90 but they do have home field advantage and we saw what their record was this is gonna be a tough team to beat and it is 7-7 Bills grabbed the lead early but we answered immediately had to have been a huge play down the field and we are holding on to this lead and extending it to 24-7 now into the fourth quarter, 27 to seven. Bills can't seem to crack our defense after the first drive and they got murdered. 24 seven is your final, 34 seven even. It was even worse. 34 to seven, Josh Allen throws for 115 yards. Completion percentage in the 50s. No touchdowns, no picks though, but not great from the Bills. I said no picks. I think it said zero interceptions on the screen. It definitely said zero touchdowns at least, but we are headed to the Super Bowl. This is exactly the type of season that we needed. And who will we be playing? It ends up being the Carolina Panthers, the Chris Jenkins Bowl. Chris Jenkins, you guys remember him? He's actually got a son, Chris Jenkins Jr., the second, I don't know, one of those, uh, plays at Michigan, might end up entering the 2024 NFL Draft. I know he's eligible. I'm not sure if he has to. Probably doesn't with the COVID year for everybody they have infinite years of eligibility. Dylan Gabriel, the Oklahoma quarterback who's a transfer from UCF, is now committed to Oregon. And believe it or not, he could end up breaking the current record set by Bo Nix, most FBS starts this next season. They were both freshmen in 2019. Bo Nix has started 60 games in his college career. And Dylan Gabriel heads into this next season somehow with eligibility because of COVID at 49 starts. If he starts every game, and, you know, of course, they have a good season, you know, make a bowl game, maybe even the college football playoff, conference championship. Dylan Gabriel will hold the record for most starts made in a college football FBS career. So that would be insane. Oregon just pulling quarterbacks from the retirement home. And uh, this is quite the game so far. 20-9 to here in the Super Bowl. I mean, the Carolina Panthers are making it close. It's a touchdown game. It's 4th and 11. David Montgomery with a drop. And we're going to have to stop Bryce Young. Back-to-back -back picks we're seeing in the championship and now the Super Bowl. It was C.J. Stroud. Now it's Bryce Young, who's under pressure. Quinn and Williams got to him, and Jermaine Johnson finishes the job. That could essentially do it. We'll need a first down, but that's all. Just one. Third and seven. We have to just keep running the ball, and it's going to pay off. No, Brees Hall stopped, but he falls ahead for enough. That's the first down. I said we needed one of them. We actually might need one more to like actually put it away, but it's pretty much over. And there's the first down that officially ends it. It's all over. And the New York Jets are Super Bowl champions. For the first time since the upset in Super Bowl three, the Jets have won the Super Bowl. It's not with Aaron Rodgers. It's not with Jordan Love like we saw in, the, I think, the last rebuild I did. Feldman is our man, and he defeats Bryce Young. Obviously got some big-time receivers for him. Sammy Samuels at tight end. Jermaine Johnson had a nice game. Gwynn Williams had a nice game as well. And uh, we finally accomplished the end goal. Mekhi Becton up there. The Jets, Super Bowl champions once again. 
Feldman has a man bun. I gotta end this video. I can't be here. Subscribe. Take it easy. Get me out of here.